Number 10. The Lusitania If there's one ship that's played a pivotal role in a war, it's the RMS Lusitania. And surprisingly, the ship wasn't even made for fighting. The Lusitania was built as a passenger liner and first set sail in 1907. She was mainly used for transatlantic crossings and had over 100 trips between the UK and the United States under her belt. But something would stop her from completing her 101st journey. In May 1915, one year after the start of World War I, the Lusitania was transporting over 1,900 passengers from New York to Liverpool, England. During this time, naval combat was taking place across the seas of Europe, with ships having to dodge not only mines, but also German U-boats. People were warned to make ocean voyages at their own risk, and captains were told to be careful. But the Lusitania didn't seem to get the message. As the ship reached the southern coast of Ireland, very close to its destination, it was struck by a torpedo from a German U-boat. After this, another explosion echoed through the ship, with many believing that this was the steamboat's boilers blowing up after taking on heavy damage. The destruction was so catastrophic that the Lusitania sank within 20 minutes. Out of the 1,900 people on board, 1,100 died, including over 100 U.S. citizens. This caused attitudes towards Germany to sour in the States, especially since the Lusitania was not a warship. Although it took almost two years after this incident to happen, the sinking of the Lusitania was one of the main reasons why the U.S. joined the war effort in World War I, helping to turn the tide against German forces. Number 9. Japanese Cruiser Aoba the Japanese heavy cruiser called Aoba was a warship used during World War II. She was built in 1926, but she was mainly used in the 1940s, after being given a complete overhaul between 1938 and 1940 to bring her up to the current military standards of the time. With a length of 607 feet, she was decked out with 10 different naval guns, 8 torpedo tubes, and her crew were able to operate 50 anti-aircraft guns on her deck. If one thing is for sure, the Aoba was not a ship to be taken lightly, mainly patrolling around the seas of China. China, Aoba knew how to handle herself in a fight. She and her crew were part of many naval battles, meaning she had to dock frequently in order to get repairs done on her battle scars. But there would be one battle the Aoba wouldn't come back from. On the 24th of July 1945, the ship was in Kura Harbor, recovering from the wounds of previous battles that left it unable to fight. While she was at her most vulnerable, the location was struck by U.S. bombs, the largest of which weighed 2,000 pounds. Not many things could survive an attack of that power, despite her ability to push through most attacks, the Aoba sank. Her wreckage left completely unsalvageable. Interestingly, the bomb that sank her was released by none other than Dick H. Gwynn, who would later become the U.S. Vice Admiral. Number 8. The SS Athenia the SS Athenia was a British passenger-carrying ship that was setting sail at the beginning of September 1939 and heading towards the U.S. Michael McShane was there, heading back home from Europe, which was gripped with fear at the outbreak of World War II, which had just begun. The Athenia was one of the only passenger liners still running since many others had had their journeys canceled or had been taken by the British government to be converted for military use. Despite only second and third class tickets being available, the ship was still pretty luxurious, with stewards on hand for passenger needs and multiple lounges, bars, and smoking rooms for them to enjoy. While those on board sat down to enjoy dinner, a massive explosion rocked the ship. They'd been struck by a torpedo. The engine room flooded with water, and the crew that was left started evacuating the passengers onto lifeboats. Packed in with over 80 people per boat and only a life jacket made of canvas and cork, the passengers waited for rescue as the Athenia sank. With war declarations only a few hours old, the SS Athenia, a passenger-carrying vessel, was the first ship to be torpedoed in what would become a six-year war. More than 100 people perished, but McShane and many others survived to tell their stories. Number 7. The Mary Rose the Mary Rose was the pride and joy of King Henry VIII. You might remember him as the king who had six wives. He was set on expanding England's navy, and during his reign, the number of military ships in the country had grown from five to 58 vessels. Built in Portsmouth in 1510, the Mary Rose was at the cutting edge of shipbuilding technology. Weighing in at 600 tons, she was one of the first ships to have gun ports, which allowed her crew to fire cannons from the side of the ship rather than on top of its deck. The English at the time were very good at picking fights with their neighbors, Scotland and France. France. Many conflicts between the nations took place over the years, and the Mary Rose fought in quite a few, including the Battle of Saint Mathieu and the Battle of Flodden. But the Mary Rose's last battle would be in 1545. The 34 year old ship was once again in combat with the French in the Battle of the Solon, a sea that stretches between the Isle of Wight and the UK city of Portsmouth. It's unknown exactly how the Mary Rose sank, but many believe it was thanks to the state of the art gun ports. It is said that while turning, she managed to tip over on her side low enough for water to enter the 
gun ports, logging her down under the waves. There are many arguments for how this happened, including the fact that her captain was on his first campaign, that she was caught in a gust of wind, that she was too heavy with all the men and equipment, or even that the French Navy managed to land a hit on her. What do you think happened to the Mary Rose? Let us know in the comments. Number 6. The HMS Sheffield the HMS Sheffield, a guided missile destroyer, was a part of Task Force 317. The 317 was a group of British ships sent to the Falkland Islands off the coast of Argentina during the Falklands War. It had a crew of 268 men and weighed 4,100 tons. In April 1982, Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, a British territory, so the UK government sent out an armed response to help the people there. By May, many of the British naval ships had arrived, including the HMS Sheffield. But on May 4th, an Argentinian bomber spotted the ship and fired an Exocet missile towards it. The missile went straight through the ship's hull and into the control room, causing a fire to break out. As the equipment burned, toxic gases were released, and the crew quickly began evacuating to get away from the poisonous vapors. It was a slow death for the HMS Sheffield. It took six days for the damage to fully take hold and for it to sink while being towed to safety. It ended up getting waterlogged and capsizing. Thankfully, many of the crew survived. 20 men lost their lives, and many more suffered injuries from the fire and blast. The HMS Sheffield was the first British warship to be sunk in over 37 years, and the first to sink as a result of the Falklands conflict. The Falklands the Falklands War ended a little over a month later, with Argentina formally surrendering on June 20th. Number 5. The HMS Hawk you may think the middle name Hawk is kind of strange to give a newborn girl, especially when the child was born in 1915, over a hundred years ago. But that's exactly what happened when Maggie Power named her daughter. Sadly, there's an unfortunate reason for this unusual middle name. Margaret Hawk Lenz shares her middle name with a warship her father died on, five months before she was born. On October 15, 1914, the HMS Hawk was part of a group of ships patrolling the North Sea off the east coast of Scotland. The Hawk was one of the oldest ships in the British Navy at the time, part of the Edgar class of warships. HMS Hawk first set sail back in 1891. It broke formation with her fellow warships to pick up some mail that was delivered by another ship. After collecting it, she tried to catch up with the rest of the group, but never made it. A torpedo from a feared German U-boat U-9 struck her. The losses on board the Hawk were huge. Over 524 men are believed to have been killed, among them Margaret's father, Joyce Powers. The youngest person to die on board in this tragedy was just 14 years old. The German U-9, though, managed to survive the war and was the only U-boat to make it through to the end of World War I. Number 4. The Arundora Star the Arundora Star is not only one of the biggest naval tragedies in history, but also one of the biggest ironic moments of World War II. Originally used as a passenger carrying liner, the Arundora Star was converted during the war to be used as a transport ship. On July 2, 1940, almost 1,600 people boarded the ship in Liverpool. 200 guards, 400 German internees, 700 Italian internees, and 86 German prisoners of war got on. They had all been at an internment camp near the city, but were being relocated to Canada since the British government was getting scared the Germans might invade the UK, especially with the rate they were pushing through France during this time. The Arundora Star was just a short distance into her Atlantic crossing, around 75 miles from the Irish coast when she was torpedoed by a German U-boat. The U-boat thought the Star was an armed merchant ship and were completely unaware of who was actually on board. Over 800 people lost their lives, meaning that over half the people on board died from the attack. Due to the passenger status, being under guard, and the barbed wire dotted around the deck to stop escapes, many were unable to get off the ship and survive. Sadly, the death toll included many elderly people, who were unable to make their way up from the bottom decks. For those that survived, they would have to make the journey to Canada again shortly after. This tragedy was a steep learning curve for Britain, and after this incident, they stopped all future deportations. Number 3. The HMS Jervis Bay HMS Jervis Bay started out as a merchant ship in 1922. As World War II dawned in 1939, it, like many other ships, was converted in order to help the war effort. By October 1st of that year, she was officially a merchant cruiser, decked out with eight six-inch guns, two high-angle guns, and other military equipment. On October 28, 1940, Jervis Bay was escorting a fleet of 37 ships alongside two Canadian destroyers. Halfway through the trip, the Canadian ships peeled off, leaving the Jervis Bay to lead the fleet alone. Slow an enemy warship approached the convoy and was identified as the German ship Admiral Scheer. The order was given for the convoy to split up to avoid being attacked, but the captain of the HMS Jervis Bay knew they needed to buy time for this to happen successfully. Despite being completely outmatched by the Germans, they squared up to fight. The Admiral Scheer hit the bay hard, 
Using every single piece of artillery it had, each strike against Jervis Bay unleashed 4,700 pounds of high explosive force. The bay managed to hold out for two hours before it sank, claiming the lives of 189 men on board, including Captain Fagan. Their efforts weren't in vain, though. 32 ships in the convoy managed to reach safe waters. Her captain, E.S. Fagan, was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest and most prestigious honor in the British Armed Forces. Number 2. The CSS Alabama during the American Civil War, the Confederate States requested the construction of many ships that were mainly built in Liverpool, England, and then sailed across the Atlantic. One of these ships was the Enrica, built in 1862 and later called the CSS Alabama. Combining steam power and wind in her sails, the CSS Alabama was a feared blockade runner, measuring 220 feet in length and fitted out with armaments allowing her to wreak havoc on Union fleets. The CSS Alabama and her crew, led by Captain Raphael Sims, were an incredibly dangerous combination. From August 13, 1862 until June 19, 1864, the ship captured over 55 vessels, burning and destroying them. To put that into perspective, the CSS Alabama was taking down an entire ship every 11 days. It's no wonder the Union forces went on a manhunt to track her down and put a stop to her destruction. All the while, the CSS Alabama was sailing around the world, making stops in locations like India and South America. After working so hard for so long, Captain Sims believed the ship was due for a refit and headed off to France to see if the repairs and maintenance could be carried out there. But the French refused to let the Alabama dock. Making their way out of Cherbourg Harbor on June 19th, the ship ran into the USS Kearsarge, and a fierce battle broke out between the two. This served as entertainment for the French at the time, with many gathering at the coast to watch the ships go at each other. Eventually, the Kearsarge was victorious. After being one of the most terrifying things on the water, the CSS Alabama finally sank to a watery grave. Number 1. The Bismarck Considered more of a floating fortress than an actual warship, the German ship the Bismarck set out on the seas for the first time on May 19, 1941. Just eight days later, it would be completely destroyed. Weighing over 50,000 tons and measuring over 792 feet in length, it was the largest German warship ever built. It's easy to understand why the Allied forces were scared of what this monster could be capable of, and as soon as they learned it set sail into the Baltic Sea, the British Navy sent out a fleet to track it down. Among the ships sent out to fight it was the HMS Hood, which was the flagship for the Royal Navy. It was the largest and most famous warship, constructed in 1918. After managing to find the Bismarck between Iceland and Greenland, the battle began. The HMS Hood started out strong, launching shells from over 14 miles away, narrowly missing the German ship. Although they didn't hit, they were enough to rattle the crew who, as the Hood closed in, started their counterattack. The two ocean behemoths were locked in explosive combat for four minutes before before the first nail was put in Hood's coffin. Battered by a number of shells, an armor-piercing round ripped through the warship and into its ammunition magazine. The result was an explosion so intense that a pillar of fire and destruction reached 600 feet into the air. All the other British ships could do was watch as the HMS Hood literally snapped in half and sank. Of the 1,421 people on board, only three survived, making it the largest loss of life in Royal Navy history. Although it won the fight, the Bismarck didn't make it out of the battle unharmed. It began to limp its way back to port to make crucial repairs, but knowing it was damaged, the British Navy wasn't going to let it slip away. They sent every ship they possibly could after it in pursuit. The Bismarck was only 12 hours from safety when an aerial assault was launched. British biplanes swarmed the warship, but they were incredibly old models. Surprisingly, this worked to their advantage, though, since they flew so low and so close to the ship that the Bismarck was unable to track the planes with their guns. The ferry swordfish airplanes hit a weak spot, the Bismarck's rudders. They ripped a hole in the side of the ship and immobilized it. May 26th would be the last night the Bismarck would spend afloat. The next morning, after a relentless assault by British warships, it sank with 2,000 soldiers on board. Thanks for watching. Which one of these ship stories did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.